En los próximos eh, minutos, en las próximas horas, eh, en este cursal, hours, eh, vais a poder testear uh, cursal, eh, diferentes talleres y, y charlas y las tecnologías eh, conocidas como habilitadoras en nuestra web 2.0. Uh, Hablamos de, de Big Data, de robótica colaborativa, inteligencia artificial, fabricación aditiva, etc. Uh, Pero eh, la industria 4.0 eh, tiene señalados dos retos, eh, dos retos importantes. Por una parte está el tema de la ciberseguridad y por otra parte también el de la formación de los futuros profesionales de la industria 4.0. Pero, y también de quienes están trabajando ahora mismo en empresas que tienen que ver con esto. De ello vamos a debatir con cinco ponentes a los que les voy a ir invitando a que se acerquen a la mesa para, para poder compartir con ellos una experiencia radiofónica diferente como es este día 4.0. En primer lugar, Jorge Arevalo, viceconsejero de formación profesional. Jorge, Jorge. Jorge. siéntate aquí, por favor. Pablo García Bringas, Pablo García que es director Bringas, de la Cátedra de Eusto y Industria Digital de la Universidad de Eusto. Pablo, no sé por dónde andas, digital estás entre el público. In Deusto University. Pablo, ¿estás ahí? Bueno, eh, seguro que está o que está escondido en algún sitio. De mientras, somewhere. vamos a ir llamando al tercer meantime, invitado, la tercera invitada, en este caso es Beatriz Ruiz, responsable Ruiz. de Recursos Humanos She's de la compañía de Ciberseguridad C21 SEC. Beatriz. Of S21 SEC. Sí, Beatriz está bajando por ahí. Beatriz, sí, está cerca. Apa. Cuidado con el escalón. Gracias. Arriba. Eh, te pongo... Vamos a dejar el hueco de Pablo, por si aparece. Eh, Pablo a slot ¿Vale, Beatriz? For when he comes. Aquí mismo. Eh, cuarto, tercer, cuarto invitado, Javier Dieguez, director del Bax Cyber Security Center. Javi. Javier Dieguez, director Javier, of the Basque pues, Cyber Security Center. Javier is not bueno, here either. Irán apareciendo, seguro. I'm se sure ha adelantado un poco la mesa redonda y es posible que sea el motivo por el cual eh, no están por aquí, pero en cualquier session. momento well aparecerán. Y Álvaro Fraile, CEO de ITS Security. And Álvaro Fraile, who is the Chief Executive yeah, Officer yeah. of ITS Security. Aquí, sí, aquí está. No sé si esperar, me voy a quedar un poco de pie, efectivamente, sí, esperando, esperando a los dos por el próximo invitado, pero para no hacerlos a vosotros esperar, sí que quiero empezar una ronda de, de preguntas, empezaría contigo, Jorge, y preguntándote cuáles son los retos de la formación profesional respecto a la industria 4.0. Does VET have uh, when facing Industry 4.0? Yes, uh, there are some major challenges out there. It's an important job we've got to do. It's, uh, we're enthusiastic about it. We've learned a lot. Thanks to the help of the Economic Development Infrastructure and Industry Department of the Basque Government, as well as the Innovation Department, because we've got a very clear aim, which is to clearly respond to the needs of our companies. Companies and Industry 4.0 is a part of that. We're trying to change what, the way we think about uh, training. Basque VET has changed a lot. And we're working on several skills. One, uh, to adapt to the environments. The other, to be able to respond rapidly to needs that uh, uh, mushroom. And the other is uh, the ability to head off, to be able to forecast what's going to happen. And We're working alongside Arancha Tapia from the regional ministry to see what sort of skills are needed. We've actually changed the teaching learning way we go about things. We've got high performance programs where we work on different skills, technologies, clear technology, technological issues, but also other human issues. The idea is to develop highly uh, skilled and highly knowledgeable uh, workers for Industry 4.0. We've also added something that we feel is important, which are the values 4.0, not just the value to be committed, to be involved, to show uh, fairness and solidarity and support, but also the role of uh, humans when we as humans are going to be working with uh, robots when we're talking about artificial intelligence, uh, human intelligence. We're also working working on that field in Basque pues, VET. Eh, so our uh, VET y, bueno, is taking eh, a new avenue and trying to respond to 
interesting challenges so that we are prepared. So we're talking about professional, professional profiles, big data, artificial intelligence, mechatronics. All of these professions are going to be required, are already being required, and of course will be so in the future. And at the end of the day, the vocational education and training sector is going to have to use its uh, training programs to what's going to happen in the future. We're seeing that every a uh, couple of years, what industry needs from its workers actually changes. Are you prepared for that? Is this, this, yes, of course we are. We're actually one step ahead of the needs that are out there. This happens, with, for example, with cybersecurity. We're actually training people on virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, merged reality. We're working on drones, uh, applied drones, industrial robotics, advanced mechatronics, or contexts that are so different, such as aspects related to intelligent systems for advanced manufacturing, to prepare employees so that they really are able to work in these settings. We're working on the Internet of Things, robotic additive manufacturing, additive manufacturing through 3D printing. So we're working in an environment which three years ago we didn't, but the way things are moving forward now in VET is actually very a very important and something else that's important to point out and here we're working alongside the economic and infrastructure development department so that SMEs can also be on board this tremendous speed of Industry 4.0. So we're now developing intelligent workshops, 4.0 workshops, and we've also got intelligent warehouses. That's another thing. Always thinking about how we can improve the knowledge of our students and also being able to offer uh, SME support, the support that's required. I'm now seeing that Pablo Garcia has arrived. He's, as we said, uh, the director of Industrial Digital at Dusto. University and those two, you're also interested in Industry 4.0, and you showed that uh, by organizing this degree. For years now, there have been different uh, dual uh, degrees that you can study. So you can include, for example, telecommunications, electronics, uh, uh, in industrial degrees. We've got a degree for industrial design applied to the digital sector and we've actually just finished the first executive program module that we launched launched this year on industry 4.0 as a whole we felt the need through feedback from the sector to a look at specific cases, to be more specific. We thought there was a disordered proliferation of technologies, which wasn't really helping us to offer a clear discourse. So, after having uh, spoken to interesting representatives uh, within the industry, such as Accenture, Telefonica, General Electric, and other groups, we started thinking about how we could offer a better service to the industry. So, we organized this program with a view to getting different companies to give us their viewpoint viewpoint about how they can innovate in industry. We don't think that innovation is something that's actually that new. We've been innovating in industry for the last 40 years, but actually what's happened now is a lot of technology is coming from the IT world very, very swiftly, and it would seem that we need to transfer this to the OT world. We don't think that we need to just follow fashion, but also look, but rather look at specific models. So this program is like a showcase for everything that SMEs or any decision maker has to know about where innovation is heading. What we've done is we've asked leaders to come together and to tell us how they do things. It's important to uh, work closely with companies to know what they want. So that goes for universities and the VET sector as well. Yes, of course.
Bueno, Beatriz, eh, Beatriz en S21 Sec, you work in cybersecurity and you've become a benchmark company throughout Europe. You're taking part in several programs. It's an important niche market, this uh, market of cybersecurity at the moment. Yes, it is very important. Firstly, good morning. It's a pleasure to share this panel session with my colleagues and and, of course, an, an honor. Trying to find uh, people uh, to work in this sector, we need uh, to work hard. We've got to attract talent, we've got to work hard, and we've also got to generate and keep talent. That's what's most complex. I think we all know that there's a lack between IT workers, business intelligence, cybersecurity, and the real supply of these uh, workers. There's this gap there, a very large gap. So for us, we continuously work in the human resource department on that. We've got to generate talent, work with talent. Of course, we work with people in companies that have people in them. That's very important. We're very active. Uh, social networks, we have innovative uh, talent management schemes and we're working on them. We've also got talent maps where we pinpoint uh, skills, how people work and how we can support people. Because I thought that when you invited me to talk here, I thought uh, that actually what companies are looking for it has changed completely. Now what they want are professionals that are uh, that experienced, that can decide where they want to work. They can cherry pick, they can decide where they want to invest their experience and their knowledge. This is very important. The model has changed completely. And companies need to be very flexible. Industry 4.0 knows that, and I think that uh, companies in the IT world are working on this. But not only that, society needs to get involved. Education needs to get involved. 21st uh, century children need to work a lot on generating emotional and social intelligence within this uh, school population. We need to encourage these people to want to learn so that what they do at school uh, is interesting in a, an interesting environment so as to be able to cover the demand of these uh, highly skilled professionals which exist in the sector. And, and it's a reality now today. We're going to be talking about motivation shortly because, of course, you spoke about this uh, lag, this uh, lack of uh, young qualified people. We've now got Javier Diegez uh, with us. He's the director of the Basque Cyber Security Centre. Good morning, everybody, and I apologize for coming late. We started actually earlier than it had originally been programmed, so that's why we couldn't find you. But we wanted you here, so thanks for coming. Javier, the Basque Cyber Security Center, for those who don't know what it is, uh, can you please tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're hoping to do? We, well, I joined the company in September, and we now offer a series of basic services, for, which include um, a telephone hotline and a hot email as well to tell people what to do if they suffer a cyber attack. We're also offering training courses. We offer uh, internships thanks to the digital uh, classroom program that Spree has. And what we're trying to do is to make people aware, globally aware, in Basque society about what cybersecurity is. It's a key element, not just economically and from a business viewpoint and at a government level, but also at a social level. It was important to, to set up this kind of initiative. I imagine that it was a, something that was required, but it's here now. We need to help it grow. We need to increase its opera operation, but it was necessary. Yes, also, in addition to being important and necessary, I think society's changed. Changed. And we need to remember that internet and interconnectivity has completely changed the way people relate to each other, the way we do business, and even the way people govern.
el gobierno vasco the Basque government que, understands eh, que los that públicos tienen que ser public uh, electronic las uh, que ser services y que need to be trustworthy, decía, companies need to be competitive, eh, and as my colleague said, the workforce needs to have skills to use eh, digital elements properly, and cybersecurity can help with all of this. The Basque fund set up the Basque Cyber Security Center to actually act as a kind of a meeting point for all of this. Alvaro, ITS Securities is a company that's been up and running for 10 years now. I'd imagine that after the WannaCry virus that people are beginning to forget now, but it's a threat that's still out there. Have you uh, detected companies, small and large, are more interested in cybersecurity issues, especially the small ones, because the bigger ones are probably already take this issue seriously. Well, WannaCry uh, did accent how important cybersecurity is for companies. I think we could draw a series of conclusions from that. Firstly, that cybersecurity is important and needs to be considered because a cyber incident can completely paralyze a company, a whole sector, or a hospital. So, this was something that was actually latent in this, but we can also conclude that when we talk about uh, dissemination, and in fact, part of Basque Cyber Security Center is to disseminate what it does. There's still a lot to be done in that field. On the day of WannaCry, there were many companies that were calling in, and of course, the large companies have their uh, protocols of action, but many smaller companies didn't actually know what to do. In fact, many... Uh, people uh, just to close down their systems. That's why we say that we need to disseminate information, we need to make sure things are important, we need to be make sure that things are visible. Uh, companies need to know what risks are out there, and you need to be prepared if there's an incident. Uh, and it's not just to be prepared if something happens, because it's, you need to be prepared for when something happens. So that's why it's important to make people aware and know about cybersecurity. Pe people right from top management down to the uh, uh, worker out on the shop floor needs to know about how important cybersecurity is. That's why we're offering uh, training. Training in cybersecurity is something that we all need to uh, study. Not just for the company or the people in charge of cybersecurity, but for everybody in a company. This is a, a debate a format. So if anybody wants to take the floor, if you want to disagree or agree or comment with one of your colleagues, uh, please do so. Alvaro, coming back to you again, um, there are data out there. The, the Basque police says that there are 2,400 attacks on companies per day. This is very alarming. I don't know if companies are aware that this is happening every day. They're not just one-off, wannacry type attacks. Are people aware of that? There's still a lot uh, of information that people need. There are companies that still locally think, ah, you know, this is some, just something that affects multinational companies, it's science fiction, it's not going to affect us. But from the Basque police data, we've seen that attacks are growing exponentially throughout the whole of the Basque country. These are the ones that people actually report. We know that there are far more than those that are reported. Many people don't report them because they're worried about the company's reputation or actually accepting that they could suffer a cyber incident here. We're talking about the publication next year of a new uh, regulation on this, which is going to require us to really pull up our socks in cybersecurity matters. Because if there's a cybersecurity incident in 72 hours, you're going to be required as a company to pinpoint that uh, attack, that incident, and report it. That means means that we're going to have to pull up our socks, take measures, have action plans, invest in cybersecurity, and especially in having these uh, action protocols. Javier, your centre works in coordination with the Basque Police Force, of course. Uh, you're up to date on what's happening and your mission is to help companies. Yes, you're right. 
our main function when we work alongside the Basque police is, of course, to provide them with the latest uh, tools and advise them on how to handle information, because once we try to prosecute uh, uh, crimes, uh, that's what the police do. The Basque Cybersecurity Center is, isn't a police center. We don't have the power to do that. We like uh, uh, the step before what the police do when they prosecute the criminals that are behind these uh, cyber attacks. So we are aligning ourselves with the uh, police force. The police force, the Basque police force has been working on cyber camps, have been getting their police officers trained in this. I'm going to move back to Jorge to talk about vocations. We left to one side um, the question of vocations. People have started saying that youngsters are losing the passion uh, for studying economics and science subjects, and that's worrying because it's something that's especially prevalent amongst uh, girls. These, this is terrible. It's not that people are saying that. That's data. That's a fact. It's worrying, especially. And of course, we need to qualify this when we talk about Industry 4.0 and this context, and uh, of course, in the field of uh, IT, we've got many people. We're going to be able to train people. There's candidates out there. But when we talk about manufacturing, we do have problems. We want young girls and boys, but especially girls, to try to choose um, a more industry-based kind of training. We're talking about industry, cl classic industry, advanced industry, or industry 4.0. What we're trying to do here in the education department is to insist uh, um, and approach uh, girls and boys in primary uh, education and secondary education so as to get them to realize how important industry is in our economy and how important it is to know science, to have scientific knowledge, maths, engineering, and how that's going to be important, not just for their future jobs, but for their future lives. We're insisting at an educational level, and of course in our field we concentrate in VET to try to convince students of the importance of this so that when they leave a VET they can carry on working or they can go to university and carry on studying. And there's another important thing that you said quite rightly. It's very important that people, everybody's aware of this, right from the general manager of a company down to the shop floor worker. And we're not only worried about works, but also lecturers, teachers, so that those teachers can teach uh, uh, cyber uh, security and also Lecturers need to know about how important uh, cybersecurity is. They need to get that across to students, even though they're not a cybersecurity specialist. They need to understand as part of their syllabus that this is a concern and, and that it's important that we should all have our uh, manufacturing fabric in a safe situation. Pablo, uh, following on from what Jorge said, of course, you need highly qualified, highly trained. Uh, uh, professors and teachers to uh, and lecturers to teach uh, these subjects. Is it difficult to find these uh, professionals? We don't have too much of a trouble because we uh, use professionals from uh, private companies and teachers and lecturers that know firsthand the application. We actually don't have, we're not too concerned about attracting teachers. We've got excellent teaching staff. Our main aim is actually completely the opposite. We need to generate all the talent that's going to be necessary. One of our main stress points is how to create talent uh, for all of these, how to train talent, for example, in the field of cybersecurity. The professionals that we have now and the number that are going to be required in the future is, is tremendous. In fact, we're actually developing an executive program in cybersecurity. It's a, a master's program that we've been developing since 2003, with the support of all the different industry leaders. We also feel, and this is linked to uh, the first question about why we have this paradox that 100% uh, of people that study engineering get a job, 93% uh, of people that studied IT get a job, and yet at the same time we have serious problems in all universities in general to attract people 
people onto these programs. When people at the age of 17 take their decision to, with the help of their uh, families uh, what to study, they don't naturally tend towards the fact that a good vocational uh, training, uh, of course, would take us into the in industry, into industry, and of course that filters down into secondary education and to, to schools. And we need uh, also to encourage girls to get on board, and we've got a group of 75 people. The majority of them are uh, boys, but there are only six girls in, uh, in, in what we're doing at the moment. So it's difficult to explain to people that there's a social use for engineering. If we just concentrate on making a machine efficient without actually adding any value to what we do, then maybe the, there's a part of the population that doesn't feel that there's any sort of implication for that for society. And this is a challenge uh, that we need to accept. I have the feeling that you have a great deal of a young talent. What we see is that uh, students and students from Navarre participate in international competitions, uh, science competitions. We see this all over and over again. And I have the feeling that uh, there is an interest, but I wonder whether these uh, students will end up developing a career in this field. Well, some subject matters are highly uh, vocational, for example, cybersecurity. What we see is that youngsters are very much motivated. We uh, received in an open doors a uh, teenager who was 16 and he was so interested in cybersecurity that he had received training at a Cisco center. And what we see is that uh, this uh, subject cybersecurity attracts uh, many students. But it's true that we all need to row in the same direction. We need to be on the same boat. There's no doubt about that. Because uh, sometimes what we see is that initially there is a great deal of motivation. These students are very passionate, but there are no career prospects. Uh, and um, they don't feel fulfilled with what they study. They have the feeling that they won't be able to find a job. Millennials. When we often talk about millennials these days, and millennials are different to previous generations. The people in this room, well, I mean, when you've uh, interviewed people for jobs, you know what we're talking about. Millennials have a very specific profile, and the business project needs to be very much aligned with what those millennials have in mind. It's true that um, in the past, engineers will, would have found these jobs very attractive, but perhaps not millennials. So there needs to be an alignment. I'd like to add something on nuance, if I may. I'd like to talk about the importance of the sector. And we also need to make sure that uh, we retain talent, because sometimes talent is lost. People or students or youngsters leave uh, to other autonomous regions, uh, and uh, sometimes they leave, and it's very hard to, to um, have them return. We're not creating that context that uh, allows for their return. Beatrice, I'd like to ask you something. I'd like to say that the first uh, workers that we hired were hired in the context of a hack Congress or hack uh, conference. I imagine that for you, it's also hard to find uh, uh, professionals in the field of cybersecurity. What we see is that there is an, uh, a lack of professionals that specialize in this sector, and I imagine that you have difficulties in finding good professionals. Yes, we do. We're working hard to address this. We're a pioneer in cybersecurity in the best country and also nationally, but our beginnings uh, were very, very difficult. We worked um, very hard uh, to hire people, and we did so through in-house or internal networking. And, um, we 
you want to uh, make sure that uh, hackers understand that this uh, their activities uh, should not be seen only as a hobby, but as a um, profession, as uh, an occupation. And it's hard to find these professionals. During the past years, uh, we've um, doubled our efforts. We want to generate talent, as I was saying. In my daily work, one of my main priorities is to generate talent. The human resource policies with which we work day after day are aimed at creating professionals. I'll talk about skills a bit later on. We're talking about the millennials, and millennials feel very, very passionate about IT, the Internet of Things, and machine learning, cybersecurity, and we need to be able to attract this side. Uh, uh, we need to scale the market. We need innovative policies. Hi, uh, recruitment um, uh, is uh, challenging. We need to help them understand that this this isn't about a hobby, this is about a career. We need to also raise awareness and uh, about generating talent. Awareness is of utmost importance. People need to understand the importance of cybersecurity. And we need to talk about evangelization as well, because uh, this concept is not very well known. And networking is also very, very important. We have um, uh, agreements with technology parts, so we need to be uh, willing to work and build bridges with universities in the best country. We've worked with the University of Deusto, with the uh, uh, Universidad Oberta de Catalunya. We need to develop these uh, joint cybersecurity programs in the best country and with other regions. And we've been uh, working with professors, uh, prof uh, professors, with teachers in the field of cybersecurity. And this year, we've had uh, our first class uh, BET students with a major in cyber security. We need to generate this talent, as I was saying. And then we have um, scholarships. Scholarships are also very important, and internal collaboration is very important as well. When I began, to work in this sector, uh, at the beginning, we were a company that generated, so to speak, um, careers, new careers. You need to understand that when there is a paucity or a scarcity of professionals, it is the company itself that needs to create or that talent, generate that talent, find those professionals. And there's something that you've underscored that I believe is very important as well. Innovation is a key lever within uh, companies, at least in our company it is. It's a driver for the force and for the growth of uh, uh, a driver for growth, sorry, and a driver for the growth of professionals. And uh, I mentioned uh, 20, 21 hours. Do you have uh, time devoted to innovation? Well, of course we do. It's a way of driving a talent, of making it flourish, and that innovation translates into new uh, business models, new ways of working. And I feel very, very privileged. And I've mentioned that 21. It's a 21 is a generator of startups. So many people have uh, created their own startup thanks to the support of the best country, thanks to a series of grants and subsidies. And we have people that have worked at 21 Sec that are highly recognized or uh, professionals that are working at Google or Microsoft. We talk about people leaving and a great deal of rotation, but this uh, fills me with pride. For everybody working at uh, S21 sector, it's a source of um, uh, pride because we're generating talent for the top-notch companies out there. We've been talking about innovation, we've been talking about generating talent, and we've been talking about retaining talent as well. Of course, we need to attract talent and we need to make sure we retain it. Yes, of course, it's very important. And we uh, sometimes focus on being very attractive to others so that our uh, customers purchase our products or services and doing business is very important, but as Peter was saying, we need to retain talent as well. We need to make our companies attractive. And uh, as uh, mentioned here, people are free to choose where they want to work. And in the field of cybersecurity, this is no exception. We see that the um, offer is uh, bigger day after day. There are many companies that are involved in this field, and we need to make our companies attractive attractive to these professionals. People want to develop, uh, to have a career in the field of cybersecurity, so we need to make further efforts to make our companies attractive to these 
professionals. When we talk about best country and cybersecurity, it's also about attracting talent. The best cybersecurity center will also be like a lighthouse. Uh, we're going to be able to attract talent because people will be willing to work here, work home, work local. We have a great um, uh, talent. We need to be able to attract professionals from other companies. I was talking about uh, retaining uh, um, talent as a way of shielding companies um, from uh, attacks and a way of protecting uh, companies. I think that we can be very proud because in the best country we have a very important fabric and I believe that we have um, excellent companies that can provide wonderful services not only locally but also internationally. Yes, I agree with that. In the best country we are lucky to have um, um, strong ecosystem and highly diverse or heterogeneous ecosystem of companies. We have even global players like Panda Security, we have distributors, we have niche companies as well. And, um, and the good thing is that we have a science, technology and innovation network. We have um, stakeholders that are very much present internationally and at a European level and in a radius of 100 or 120 kilometers, we have a very high density of uh, companies. There are very few regions out there in Europe that have this uh, ecosystem and this uh, should provide us with a great competitive advantage. Um, and I think that we are very well positioned in terms of technology or technological innovation. Europe is uh, concerned about our scarce autonomy China, if compared to the Americans, the Chinese, or the Japanese. Unfortunately, here, we don't have uh, much in-house technology, and it's true that we depend to a great extent on external technologies, on imports of technologies. That's why I believe that we need to make a very important uh, effort in order to position our own digital technologies better. And fourth, in terms of digitization, it's very, very important that youngsters do internships and, uh, and training in companies that dual training is very, very important because it allows them to be in close contact with what reality, because sometimes you go to uni, you learn, but then when you go to the market, the situation is altogether different to what you expected. Yes, of course. In the best country, we work hard to um, cover the needs of our companies. We need to consider that everything progresses at a hectic pace. We want to um, provide uh, uh, companies with what they need, with the professionals they need. We're working with more than 1,300 companies. Companies are, are working hard and uh, in strong uh, relationship with us. We want to have VET students that cater for the needs of uh, our companies. It's not just a matter of skills and capacities. It's also a matter of attitudes, of um, very specific mindsets. It's not a matter of having the theoretical knowledge but, and the theoretical skills. It's a matter about uh, being willing to continue learning. When we're talking about Industry 4.0 and technology in, in general, we need to consider that everything is on the move, everything is evolving, and maybe what we are applying today will no longer exist in one year. So that mindset is very very, very important. That attitude is very important. That's something you're, you're working on as part of your training, right? Yes, of course. That's uh, the most important factor as been pointed by companies. Well, but of course, they need to have the technical skills and capabilities. But the attitude and, and the mindset understood in a very broad terms is very important. It's not just a matter of teamwork. People or students need to also have that entrepreneurial uh, cultural mindset. Said, we want them to be autonomous, we want them to be able to understand situations, they need, we, they need to be prepared to solve problems, to make decisions in their um, daily work. So the whole approach has uh, changed, we've changed the uh, teaching methodologies to work on attitude as well, it's a priority for companies, probably Pablo agrees. 
yes, it's not just about the technical skills, but also the mindset, the attitude. Yes, I fully agree. And our youngsters need to be willing to work hand in hand with their core workers. We have different tools. We have dual training in order to, um, uh, of course, satisfy the needs um, of companies. Uh, and to this end, we have a, a series of tools. And we also have the so-called technology room or Aula Tecnológica sponsored by different companies. And the idea with this concept is to uh, work precisely on these um, uh, skills. We want to generate talent, as we were saying. And uh, what we want is to involve and engage companies in our undergraduate degrees. So during the third or fourth year of training, uh, our students can collaborate with companies on specific projects. Well, this is also a form of innovation in itself. As Beatrice was saying, we want to plant that seed among youngsters so that they feel that uh, willingness to continue learning. It's not a matter of finishing your degree. That's it. No, they need to understand that uh, they need to be open to uh, ongoing uh, training. And of course, we also need to refresh the skills of the workforce, for example, to learn how to manage a virtual reality device. Um, I don't know whether you at DISH are working with this as well. Well, we've uh, had um, some experiences, but they've been quite frustrating, I must say. And we've uh, been working with some external projects. And a um, word of caution, um, Needs to be said. And we need to be very, very careful when uh, defining our objectives. Uh, I mean, we need to consider what is important for the different companies. We need to consider the transformation we're embarking on. Sometimes, instead of talking about Industry 4.0, we talk about digital transformation, because it's all about transformation at the end of the day. Yes, in, the, in, the, in terms of technologies, we have a set of technologies, and we have a so many technologies that we can cover one whole decade. So we need to focus on the idea of transformation, digital transformation. We need to consider where we stand in this transformation process. We need to know what we want, where we're heading to. And um, what we've been talking a great deal about big data. And maybe we purchase a new CPD. And what are you going to do with the CPD? Where well, we're going to analyze data, and then we'll see. Well, then we'll see. It's not something uh, that is reliable and that may lead to frustration and that will perhaps um, end up stagnating the whole process and um, we need to be also ready to deal with the technological uncertainty. Sometimes you want to apply technology in a specific field, but it doesn't work. That happens. And uh, perhaps the second in or innovator in your organization is going to be frustrated as well. So these are things that we need to consider. I like to add sometimes. Sometimes technology doesn't work. And sometimes what happens is that the industry or the sector is willing to transform itself, is willing to integrate digital tools, but they don't know how to adapt those tools to their specific business. So they need to be accompanied along the way. They need support. And what we see is that sometimes um, they need that support. Sometimes the industry, the company, don't understand the full potential of technology. And that's an important limitation as well. Yes, we have a high percentage of SMEs, for example, that can't really convey a clear innovation narrative or discourse and can say, look what, uh, what they've done in the United States. They're focused on their daily work. They're focusing on uh, next month, on this quarter, and the 
need to find or they need to seek for support and they need uh, uh, people that accompany them in this transformation journey. Uh, so they need to first have a clear idea as to the indicators they want to work on, uh, what the room for improvement is, and then once they have that very clear in their mind, they need to look out and uh, find a technology partner. Yes, of course, as a means, we'll need to have a clearly defined strategic plan and then decide what technologies they need. But sometimes it's done the other way around. They say, okay, we're going to embark on a transformation process, but they don't have clear objectives. Well, they need a structured, well, perhaps not so structured strategic plan. The metaphor that I once heard on the two points, sometimes you plant point one and you don't know how you're going to reach point number two. But if you have uh, an idea of where you want to head to, if caution is applied and if there's rigor in the way that you work, you'll probably end up reaching that point number Number two, when we talk about innovation, if you use many indicators based on what you've been doing in the past, which is what we often do in strategic plans, you sometimes miss uh, new indicators, indicators that will help you for the upcoming five years. Who would have uh, told us about uh, WhatsApp some years ago? Of course, we need to have a plan, we need to adhere to that plan and follow that plan, but we also need some leeway. And some flexibility, if I may say. I agree with what you're seeing. Well, they agree. But there's something that we need to bear in mind, which is speed. Because, of course, I understand, with what, uh, I understand what you're saying. We need to have a clear idea in mind. We need to know where we're heading to. But everything is evolving very, very fast. We need to run and we need to sprint, full out sprint. So when we talk about excellence, that's very important. But there's something we've learned when working with the regional Ministry of Industry and Innovation, which is the fact that we need to be effective. They're asking us for effectiveness. How can we define effectiveness? Well, efficacy on the one hand, to know what we need to do, that's something that we've been uh, told by the two regional ministries. Uh, efficiency to do things well and speed as, as well. Things need to be done fast. And then accuracy as well. What do you do fast? You need to be done based on the needs of the, uh, the environment. Yes, we need to reflect, uh, but we need need to be fast, otherwise we're going to be run over. And speed is very important, at least from our point of view. Yes, I believe steering groups here play a very important role because they are scouting the market, trying to identify the trends, and working with technology centers and giving us uh, uh, those um, signs uh, and that information on the new technologies that needs to be developed. And uh, consolidated companies um, are more and more willing to collaborate with the startups that are researching with the new technology. So little by little, what we are seeing is that those companies are less and less reluctant to collaborate with these small companies that are more innovative. So as an organization, we need to have experts. Um, uh, but of course, you can't have experts in all the technology niches. That's uh, impossible. That's absolutely impossible. That can't be covered. That happens some years ago. We were working in, um, in big data, massive data. We started working with several technologies. We felt more or less comfortable. But then, overnight, we saw that the German government for some time had promoted their own technologies, and brought them to market, and it works 60 times faster than the previous technology. And so how can we address this as professionals? Should we go for this new technology that is a bit different, is incompatible with the previous one, but it's faster? What should we do? So, of course, we need to consider the full ecosystem. Um, and uh, there will be different companies that will position themselves, that will fill up the different spaces. Um, and perhaps we need to um, 
consider those um, uh, that which is being done by the different entrepreneurs uh, out there. I think that Vine 4.0 is being very good. They are bringing together startups and uh, major corporations and companies, and that's also very important to build bridges among them. And uh, I'd like to mention the concept of uh, entrepreneurship, emprendizaje in Spanish, which combines uh, learning, aprendizaje in Spanish, and entrepreneurship. And I think this is very, very important because entrepreneurs are doing entrepreneurship from within companies, and at the same time, they need to embark on an ongoing you know, uh, education or training uh, journey. And I believe that this concept that we've coined at S21 sect is very, very important. Yes, we need talent, we need levers, we need um, to allow these uh, entrepreneurs to do entrepreneurship within companies. You've talked about the millennials and these new profiles. Is there a common denominator, denominator or something that stands up, uh, stands out in S21? Uh, we, what we've seen is that we're looking for technological skills, but I very much value versatility because in cybersecurity, the cybersecurity uh, uh, consultant, one may have a, a very um, clearly defined profile, but no, that's not the case. I have 17 different profiles for cybersecurity. We have hackers, the ones that cover compliance issues, industrial cybersecurity, that's within industry 4.0, and they're working, and there's a standout there on um, industrial cyber security. So we have uh, sub uh, categories. I'm looking for versatility. I want uh, and workers to be versatile because people are asking for changes in uh, a department. Uh, I was working in hacking, and now I want to do industrial cyber security. That's something that we're hearing. And the company needs to allow uh, for these changes, for this uh, movement from one department to another. We're talking about highly versatile profiles. And um, we need versatility, as I was saying, and people that are willing to continue learning. I'm, uh, more or less, I'm a millennial, and in my team, I have said why generations I've um, lost track uh, of the letter. And these um, people are constantly on the lookout for knowledge. They want to continue learning and learning new stuff. And that's what motivates them daily. And it is our responsibility as companies to provide them with these um, uh, training opportunities. And there's uh, another very important skill that I'd like to underscore, teamwork. This may seem obvious, but it isn't. I'm referring to the willingness to work with others, hand in hand with others. Team spirit, this is the breathing ground for uh, sharing of knowledge, and sharing and exchanging knowledge is essential for our companies, among them our company, of course. And then just another thing I like to underscore, which is passion for cybersecurity and passion for uh, technology in general. When I have breakfast uh, with my co-workers, and breakfasts are a bit, you know, freaky, they, my colleagues talked about the Internet of Things, machine learning, and the discussions are very interesting, passionate. And as a human resource a, a manager, I learned day after their day from their conversations. And this uh, is also a bonding element among us. Aside from passion that I believe, uh, believe is important, we see this at a university and also in, in VET trainings, I'm often contacting by these people that are willing to learn, they're, they're looking for scholarships to continue learning. And there's another element that I believe is essential, which are principles and values, particularly so in the world of cybersecurity. Ethical hackers are hackers that have a strong set of principles and values, and this is something that we value and that we believe needs to be worked on and acknowledge at S21 SEC. And, um, let me mention something else, uh, if I may, which is internationalization at our company, S21 SEC. And I'd like to say that the best government uh, provides wonderful internationalization uh, scholarships. 
we've been able to send students to Mexico, to Brazil, and Argentina. We want to continue along this path. This, in our opinion, is very, very important because this is a lever uh, that opens up our technology market to the world. And Alvaro, as Beatrice was saying, in the field of cybersecurity, it is very important that um, um, professionals evolve and continue learning, and their knowledge needs to be constantly updated. And of course, it's not just about the technological skills, but also the attitudes. Well, this, there are this a great amount of a great degree of self-study in the field of cybersecurity. Um, and we're talking about, however, a field that is constantly evolving, a cybersecurity threats change day after day. Therefore, the profile of our professionals needs to change as well. And there needs to be a constant adjustment, a constant evolution, and we need to be willing to learn. So we're looking for people that are always willing to learn, that are never self-complacent, that are willing, to, that are very techy, that are um, are willing to learn and that are um, willing to learn more and more about their devices and about the new uh, developments. We're talking about cybersecurity, but uh, let me uh, highlight the importance of industrial cybersecurity. We're talking about automatization. It's highly complex. I mean, it's another field. It's another uh, big field that wasn't that active, so to say. The industry in the past wasn't as connected as it is today, and now we're exposing everything in the cyberspace. So what you, this means is that we have devices that are connected, that are different to the traditional computer and server world. So the whole scenario is much more complex, and what we see is that new devices are are launched to the market every day, and we need to help manufacturers, uh, manufacturers cyber secure devices, and uh, we need embedded security as well. That's also very important for us. But what this means is that we need to be willing to work with new devices and trying to attack them and to identify vulnerabilities and to help the manufacturers make them more secure. Okay, Javier, what are the challenges of the Basque Cybersecurity Center in the short term? If I had to choose one word to describe cybersecurity, I'd say trust. So perhaps the most important challenge ahead of us at the moment as an organization that collaborates with the Basque government is gain the trust of those who we aim to serve. If I had to choose a second word, it would be collaboration. Collaboration to try to go beyond and not just be an organization that collaborates with the Basque government, but become a kind of a social concept so that all the different stakeholders, that is technological agents, companies, research networks, and the public administration can all find the place to add greatest value and all row together in the same direction. So in the short term, our challenge is to gain trust, and in the medium to long term, it's to get everybody to work together. You're going to be giving a masterclass this afternoon at the end of this event, and you've got an email address open, in, you can, it's in Basque, Spanish, and English, so anybody that uh, wants to say anything can ask you, Jorge, talk to us about VET, a couple of minutes left, what are the challenges for VET? in the Basque country in comparison to other regions. And I don't like making these comparisons saying we're the best region, but when you talk about talk to people from other regions in Spain, they always seem to envy what we're doing in the Basque country. What, what else can be done? Well, quite clearly, trust and collaboration, I, I like that. Our companies trust VET. VET is not going to let them down. And when we talk about collaboration, we collaborate a great deal with the Basque government, with the Economic Development Department, to try to make sure that we're all reading off the same hymn sheet. And our job is to prepare people well, to train them well, so that they can respond to those needs that are so important out there. It's important for them, because we want greater human sustainability.
sustainable development, but also we need to remember how important our companies are for the future of this country. What about Deusto University, Pablo? You've got a professorship, a chair that you've just founded, you've got a degree in Victoria. What are the challenges that you face and what are you going to carry on doing? We need to generate talent. I like these two words that you use. We're copying him. If we don't trust uh, everybody, mm, that what we're doing is meaningful to us, but also meaningful, of course, for the country, then nothing else will work. I liked that word. Thanks to all of you, to Jorge, Pablo, Beatriz, and Javier, and Álvaro, for having spent some time with us during this panel session to talk about the challenges in the world of Industry 4.0 and how those challenges relate to cybersecurity and the ET. So thanks for being here.